What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Matt Chat Live. And I am with my new friend, Susan. We get to talk about some interesting things today. We're going to be talking about uh, stress. We're going to be talking about teenagers. We're going to be talking about the quiet zone. So we got all kinds of fun things we'll be chatting about. So hello, Susan. Welcome to Matt Chat Live. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah, so glad that you're here. So, Susan, if you'd just um, kind of let everybody know a little bit who you are and uh, what you do and tell them a little bit about your business, which is uh, the Quiet Zone Coaching. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm Susan Patang, and I'm a certified life coach. And, of course, I belong to the Quiet Zone Coaching. Uh, what I do is I help people who come from dysfunctional families learn the skills and get the tools they need to deal with stress, to deal with frustration and to deal with just the general crap in life. Um, and this is really important for us to have if we're going to manage the stress of everyday life. So that's what I do. Awesome. Hashtag crap in life, right? So let's deal with the fact that we all face that one. That's for sure. Yeah. Not to mention, I don't know. Um, 2020. I mean, that sounds kind of familiar, you know, so a lot of stuff going on there. So I guess what's interesting to me is I've, I've talked to a lot of people, a lot of different coaches, obviously, and there's all kinds of cool names out there. So where did the quiet zone come from? Well, the quiet zone came from uh, basically a meditative experience. Um, some people are religious and they don't want to meditate, and that's fine, okay? Um, saying the rosary, reciting the Lord's Prayer, things like that, these are all forms of meditation. But when you use the word meditation, people freak out. Okay. Yeah. yeah, oh yeah, it's like, oh, this is woo-woo. Then they think you're going to tell them to sit in a corner and dangle a crystal over their head and chant home for three hours, and it doesn't work like that. So um, I was trying to uh, make the concept of putting your brain in neutral, which is really important. And I mean, there are lots of Christian meditation sites, um, you know, that are appropriate so, you know, when you're doing it properly, it really creates new neural pathways in your brain. It helps keep your body as calm as your mind. So the quiet zone came as a euphemism basically for meditation. That's awesome. And uh, you said, you know, park your brain in neutral. I tell you what, I've tried to do that for a long time and it, it is not easy, girl. I'll tell you, you know. what, I don't know if I've ever been in neutral, but uh, I've, I've had to learn how to do it a few times in my life. And uh, that's one thing that cancer definitely taught me. So what's what's one quick tip here? Here's one to throw right at you. What's a quick tip to get that thing in neutral? You know, those folks have got all kinds of stuff going on here. How can you get to the point where you can actually do meditation or prayer or or focusing or things of that nature? Um, well, really, it's just a matter of finding a focal point. OK, so sometimes what I'll have people do is I'll have them look at a candle um, one of my favorite things is to have them just look out the window and notice something in nature and just observe it. Okay, so another thing you can do is uh, just pick up any object, um, like pen off your desk. Okay, what's it made of? What color is it? What does it look like? How does it feel in your hands? Um, just so you're focusing in on one thing just for a few minutes. And th what that'll do is it takes, it stops the spiral of thoughts and it puts you in now because that's, <clears throat> excuse me, that's the only time that's real, isn't it? Is right now. The past is gone. Future's not here yet. So that's what meditation does is it helps you focus on what's going on right now. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of that for sure that's going on. And uh, there's been some things for you specifically that have been, uh, I think, more dear to your heart the last couple of times we've spoken and, and you talk about teenagers a lot lately. And a lot of times here on, on LinkedIn, where we're primarily home at, of course, this show goes to Facebook and YouTube and everywhere else and all the uh, podcast sites out there. Hello, everybody that's listening today, by the way. Um, so, you know, what really got you to be the position where you started finding uh, more, more youth, more teenagers, students coming your way? You know, I, it, I think it has to do with COVID. You know, the kids are working from home. Um, and I know even my grandson, there are, it's been in and out. Like he goes to school and then they say, oh, no, 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 go home. You know, and okay, now you're back in school again. Oh, no, 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 no. Now it's, you know, so there's this confusion that's happening with the kids. <clears throat> Excuse me. And they just don't, they don't know whether they're going to school, they're not going to school. 
And as we had talked about before, our brains are not fully formed until we're in our 20s. So here we've got these teens and their brains aren't fully formed yet. They're still developing. They're dealing with hormones and they're also dealing with a lack of wisdom and social skill. Um, yeah. So they have. And I say I've probably met some 50 year olds that haven't had brains <laughs> formally formed all the way yet either. But uh, yeah. that's a whole other story I would assume. But yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of those things that are, that are not necessarily there. I mean, I'm a parent of, of a couple of teens and. I didn't remember how much I thought I knew when I was a teenager until I had some teenagers that tell me how much I don't know. That's so, right. <laughs> quite amazing how they have it all figured out. Oh, they um, do. They do. That's, that's, they do. Awesome. that's the point. It is, that's their reality. That's their perception. They really think they've got it figured out. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. We're dumb. You didn't know that? You know, we, we... <laughs> I, I, I know it. Trust me. I know it. But. But no, that's that place where uh, where it's just not not necessarily true. And to be able to break through in some of those lives, because there's some really incredible kids out there. And that's just the reality. We all face that. Have a little bit of fun with that one for sure. But there is reality to that to that statement in the sense that they're not really fully uh, prepared for those things in life. You know, there's a lot of things that we're supposed to do as parents. We're ultimately responsible for our children. But at certain points, there's only so much you can do because you know, we're going to do what we want to do at the end of the day and people are going to make some choices. Right. So okay. well, what have you been we what's that? That's how we learn is by making mistakes and making choices. And unfortunately, the uh, the current situation that exists out in the world right now is kind of uh, restricting that for, for a lot of teens. You know, they, they don't have the opportunity to make these decisions and choices. You're right. And uh, for <laughs> sure, there's a lot of them that are being bottled up and they're stuck at home. You know, it's not like everybody's necessarily imprisoned in their homes, but, uh, you know, we can't do as much as we used to. It's getting a little better, but there's still you know, a lot of restrictions out there and some places are worse than others. Uh, different countries I've got, you know, the shows in Australia. There's a lot of friends of mine in Australia and uh, they're in some serious lockdown scenarios there. And, and in most cases, they're only allowed to leave the house for one hour to go outside and do some exercise or run around or for an emergency only basis. I mean, that's some serious lockdown, right? Yeah. So uh, that can have a have an effect on somebody, especially kids, because after a while, there's only so much Fortnite or there's only so much Netflix you can handle, and then it's time to do something else. And it may not be what you want them to do. <laughs> right, <clears throat> and the other thing is too, is that, and I know for me, this was super true, was the separation from parent. OK, so you've got the parents working at home. You've got the kids stuck at home. And I know um, a lot of kids, in, they, they're trying to break free of their parents at that age. They're trying to become that human being that they know that they're becoming. You know, they have more more knowledge than, say, an eight year old would, but not as much as a 30 year old would. Right. So this experience, they this is the experience that they get from being able to do things on their own and they're not getting that experience because of lockdown situations because of um you know social distancing and things like that and that's another thing too is that teens teens tend to be tactile uh they're more tend to be more touchy-feely and huggy and you know you see the little girls like oh it's my best friend you know and hugging each other um they can't do that now um, it's a risk. Well, they, yeah. they can, but that, hey, it's not a good idea. So this is taking away part of the learning process. And as a part of that, I'm noticing an awful lot of parents of teens uh, coming to me and saying, my, my daughter or my son is super anxious um, or is depressed or is, you know, not, is not coping well with any of this. And then there are a lot of kids that actually are coping better, uh, which is interesting. You know, yeah. they, 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 the, some of that social strain is removed from them. So it's, it's pretty interesting to see. It is. There's a quite a, quite a different dynamic and, and it's, <clears throat> kind of, it's kind of hard to find that balance point right now. Um, I think we're getting closer to it, but um, there's definitely some work to, to be done. So what might be some of the most common thing that you're seeing in, in a student right now, or the most common discussion maybe you might be having? What's, what's that kind of look like for you? Uh, mostly social anxiety, a lot of social anxiety, um, uh, uh, mostly teenage girls. And some of them are not your younger ones, like 14, 15, 16. You're talking 17, 18, 19 year olds who are, are ready to go to college. 
and <clears throat> they're concerned about going off to school because now for the last year, um, they've been at home. And this is a really um, formative time, you know, in their lives. But I'm seeing a lot of social anxiety. Um, and I think there's a cumulative effect. If we hadn't had the lockdowns as long as we had, that you know, maybe you know, kids are resilient. They bounce back. Um, yeah. But I think if there was already an issue with fear and anxiety, um, you know, maybe even some mild depression, it, it's been exacerbated by this whole, the whole COVID thing. And yeah. there's also fear, you know, they're afraid some kids, I know there was this one child I was uh, working with, um, she was terrified of getting sick and it wasn't because she was afraid of getting sick. It was because her parents had comorbidities and she was afraid she would go to school, get COVID and come home and kill her parents. Mm. Yeah, that's reality. There's there's a lot of situations like that. And I'm I'm definitely susceptible to problems because of uh, my cancer's battle and all the things that have happened in my body. I'm a, I'm at risk, you know. So it's uh, it is true. There's some things like that that can really happen. So in that scenario with the kids that you've been working with and some of the some of the scenarios you've been uh, hearing about or working with directly, as I said. Um, are you able to pull in parents as well? Are you making this a family thing? Are you focusing like just on the on the students or are, what are some things you're providing for for kids, students, you know, teenagers, parents that could be helpful to move forward? Well, what I do is I have um, a curriculum. OK, and it starts off with uh, defining your value system, defining your spirituality. That's really super important. Um, to have that as a foundation first. And then we talk about uh, what psychologists call reframing, changing the way you look at things. So instead of looking at things like this stinks, I can't stand this, this is horrible. Let's find something good about it. Let's find the, the lessons that we can learn. So there's a whole uh, curriculum that goes along with it. And there are other part, you know, communication skills and things like that. I let the parents have a touch base with me at least once a week um, so that we can talk about how the, the child is doing um, with the skill set. And also the child can talk to me outside of the, of the parents hearing. But if they want to have uh, parents and children together in a session, I will be more than happy to do that. Um, it depends on the needs of the child because everything I do is customized. So I, you know, I make sure that yeah, everybody's parents, different. So you have to take around a little bit to whatever needs are there, right? Right, whatever their needs are. So sometimes um, it's an issue with communication with the parents. You know, I've had uh, situations where there are helicopter moms, um, and they don't realize that they're helicopter moms. So it's like, no, you're not coming in the session. Okay, <laughs> no, I will talk to you on the phone later, but you're not coming in the session. And there are other times when. Um, you know, maybe the, the parent needs to hear this child. Um, and then I will be definitely saying, yeah, you're coming in, um, you know, with the child's permission, depending on how old uh, the older kids, like 17, 18, um, you know, these are, these are adults basically uh, in terms of, of certain emotional growth. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you know, if they want their parents, great, they can come. Um, yeah. Yeah, but I always do touch bases with the parents because they need to know what's happening. And a lot of times, I mean, you're the parent of teens. I mean, do they talk to you? I know my kids didn't. <laughs> yeah, I, I am the, the last person to find anything out. I mean, like literally in our house, I'm the last person to find out. Once in a while, I get a bone thrown to me. But, you know, for the most part, you're right. Yeah, it's going to be either I'm going to catch something I read on a post or maybe hear something that's being said in the room with the door cracked open or something, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I remember when and my kids, I mean, my kids are all grown, but they're all healthy, happy adults now. Um, so they all turned out OK. But boy, when they were teenagers, I was like, wow, you know, am I am I doing this right? I mean, you know, there's no manual. You know, nobody tells you what to be doing with your kids. You know, did I give them the tools that they needed? Are they OK? You know, is, is, it, is this what I'm supposed to be doing? And they don't they don't want to talk to you, your mom. You know, or dad, you know, it's like, no, you know, what, what do you want to talk to you for? So, uh, you know, that's and that's another thing I try to do is I teach um, communication and conflict resolution because there's there can be a lot of conflict uh, mm -hmm. between parents and the kids. So they have to you learn. How to, yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, I guess that was a stupid comment. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's right. so not stupid. It's true. And yeah. you get, but it's, it's important. Important to have the right tools. There's a lot of times. 
you know, I felt like I was pretty equipped because I've got some education and knowledge and there's things that I do to help other people all the time. Uh, sometimes when I'm with the kids or, or my, even my wife, you know, a lot of those things go right out the window and I make all the wrong choices, do the wrong things. And it's great to have some things in front of you on concrete, you know, well, not on concrete, but maybe, but you, know, yeah. something that you could read or look at so that you can uh, stay focused on, on what the real thing's supposed to be about. So you talked a moment ago about some curriculum that you use. Is that some things you're using that are uh, outside resources you've been using or are they some things that you've done yourself? No, these are all techniques that I built myself. Um, and they came from a place of experience. I mean, um, I suffer from anxiety and depression myself. And these are the tools that I use to overcome that and the stress of life when medication and therapy only did half the job. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I had my first panic attack when I was five. So, wow. yeah, and I remember it. I remember it still. Um, and it's been many, many, many years. So, and, and I mean, there was one point in time where I called up my mother and I apologized to her for being the kid that I was. <laughs> because, I mean, it, you know, it, it was very hard um, to learn how to be a human being when you are constantly trying to self-protect. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, and I took that into adulthood and I made a lot of boneheaded moves. Uh, you know, it's like I look back on that and go, wow, that was dumb. You know, yeah. <laughs> but but when you look at you reframe it and you say, OK, well, look at everything I learned from that. And now I can take all these skills and put them together and give them to other people. And it's not the skills that are new. These are things that have been proven gold standard things for dealing with um, all the alphabet disorders like PTSD and ADD and OCD and EIEIO and CIA. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, you know, these are these are all gold standard uh, procedures and techniques. And what I did was I just put them together in a logical step by step package uh, because I know it works because it worked for me. Yeah, well, that's really some of the stuff that works the best when you know it's been tried and proven. And in many cases, um, I, I'm the same way. And, and I tell people all the time, look, I I can tell you what not to do because I'll tell you what. I've made every mistake you could possibly think of. Probably going to make more. I hope not, but I probably will. Oh, and yeah. I, you know, my, we all my, do. I definitely will. But, you know, I, I want to be able to point people in the right direction. And by knowing what not to do, you have the kind of the flip side of that to say, well, if you do this, it'll be much better. right? <laughs> so, and kids tend to listen to other people better than they do listen to their own parents a lot of times. So when you're able to get, share some of those things, it can be very helpful. Yeah. So I, I know there's a couple of uh, books that you've written. Uh, one is The Mindful Stress Management uh, for Everyday People mm -hmm. and The Quiet Zone Method, obviously, which is speaking into the uh, your coaching program, The Quiet Zone uh, mm -hmm. Coaching, right? So uh, tell us a little bit about these two books, Mindful Stress Management for Everyday People yes. and Its Own Method. <laughs> well, they're both based on um, the Quiet Zone Method, which is you know what I call my whole curriculum. Um, the Quiet Zone Mindful Stress Management for Everyday People came first, and that was kind of that. I I wrote that book when I was just a new coach, when I was just starting to coach people. And it was kind of like a brain vomit, you know, like, <laughs> you know, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, OK, I have to put this down on paper. I mean, I had the the curricula all put together for my clients. But I said, you know what? I, I, I just have so much to say on the subject. And I just started writing it down. Um, and when I looked at it, I said, well, that's not bad. Let me publish it. <laughs> I was like, okay. Um, and then the second one is actually, it's a really, really thin book. It's uh, basically just an outline of the whole program because I wanted to be able, not everybody can afford coaching and I don't charge a lot. I'm like one of those cheapo coaches, you know, like all the other coaches, <laughs> all the other coaches in the industry hate my guts because I'm one of those that's, that says, oh, why are you charging that? You know, um, you know, people, the people who need my services don't have the money. Um, and I felt really bad because I remember when I was a single mom, um, if only I had had some money to get somebody to help me through that anxiety. Yeah. So I put together, it's a, it's a really super, super thin book, <laughs> but it's the outline of the whole program. So people can get it either on my website or on Amazon. And that way they can work by themselves. 
And, yeah. you know, they don't want to have, some people just don't want to talk to other people about their problems, which is fine, you know. Well, that's a starting point, you know, if maybe you have something like the book that you, books that you have available, uh, by the way, there's your website, again, thequietzonecoaching.com, you're welcome, um, that at least it's a place to start. And maybe when you start reading it into some of those things and finding there's some ways to apply some changes in your life, then voila, now I've got a chance to say, I want to call this gal up and see if there's a way that we can actually work together, right? So um, so folks have a chance to go to that website there at thequietzonecoaching.com uh, and check out some of those things that you do have available. And you you did bring up a, a, an important fact is there there are some folks out there for sure um, that, uh, I mean, let's be honest, there's some coaching programs out there that are, that are just through the roof, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, for some people, that's that's where they can go. And for some people, other people, it just can't. Yeah. And um, to have some resources available uh, for folks that can't go there but need to take some steps maybe to get there one day, um, this is a great place to be. Or just in the sense of the people you're working with, period, you got to know who your audience is. And, you know, if your audience is a certain person with a certain income with a certain way, ability to spend a certain amount of money, then either you're going you're gonna to do things for them and help them or you're not, right? So, Well, there's, there's a need for coaches in every different demographic. OK, right. so somebody like, um, well, you know, if somebody like Donald Trump was to call me up and say, hey, I want some life coaching, um, I'm probably not the person for him. Um, you know, I don't move in that world. I don't um, you know, that's that's not my areas, my specialty. And I might say things to him he might not like, um, <laughs> you know, but the same thing applies to, you know, you get and there are some wonderful coaches out there, but they are high end. Yeah. OK. Um, I work with, that's why my book was called uh, Mindful, um, Mindfulness for Everyday People, um, because everyday people, we, we're the ones, we're, we're the people who are out there doing the work. We're the ones who are, um, you know, making, making things happen. And we don't have that kind of money, you know, and I, and I know I never grew up with money and I never grew up. So I was like, no, you know, I want to serve that aspect of the population. Yeah, so I work. Great. Yeah, I work with everybody. I try. I try to accommodate everyone. I put together packages that are based on their income level. Yeah, not yeah. fantastic. So, of course, we're just talking about teenagers, and we got just a few more minutes here left to go. But there's other folks that you're working with as well. Um, so, who was your besides teenagers, which we know is fantastic? Mm -hmm. What are some other uh, people groups that you work with on a regular basis? So would it be you know, executives, or could it be a small business owner, or you know, friends sure. it's, it's, or family? Or, you know. <laughs> it's usually millennial women, uh, working women, um, you know, whose parents. When you think about um, millennials and what their parents were doing. Um, and a lot of them, I, I make jokes about, oh, well, if you're from a dysfunctional family like me, then you need, you know, you need, <laughs> need some help to learn the life skills. But a lot of times it's not because our parents didn't teach us those life skills because they there was something wrong with them. It was because they were working. Um, they had, you know, they were busy with with the thing, their responsibilities. And millennials, I think their parents were uh, pushing hard you know, financially, you know, trying to, to make a living and to make things work and to make life better for them than what they had. Yeah. So it, you know, and unfortunately what happens is, is that takes parents out of the household and not in a place where they're available for their kids all the time. So I think that might have something to do with it. You know, a lot of, a lot of millennial women, working women, um, middle management uh, style, they're, they're usually the ones who call me. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. Well, of course, one more time, I'll tell folks that the, the main place they can find you is thequietzonecoaching.com. And uh, you're also where we met on, uh, uh, well, we met on LinkedIn or we met a Matchmaker. I can't remember. I it was it was. Matchmaker FM, yeah. You're on LinkedIn as well, though, yes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, you can find her on LinkedIn. And also, I'm sure you're on Facebook and other places like that as well. But uh, when you go to thequietzonecoaching.com, there'll be all these little links down there. You can click on and find her all over the place, right? So it's a great <laughs> place to go. And again, those uh, those books you have available, uh, I've got them scrolling down there in the bottom. That's mindful mindful stress management for everyday people, right? And the quiet zone method. And uh, I'm sure those will be fantastic books for folks. I haven't had a chance to check them out yet. I think I'll have to go on there and click and uh, get some coming my way, especially that that quiet zone one. I think I'd the uh, I'd be interested in that one for sure. Is that the, which one's the smaller one? Is it the quiet zone was the smaller That's one? That's the quiet zone method. Yeah, it's, it's really short. It's like 
I don't know, 50, 30 to 40 pages. It's really just a very brief outline of the method so that people can, can apply it to their own lives. Oh, that's awesome. That's really good to have something like that, especially in paper. A lot of times, you know, I'm, I'm a big app guy and I, I do everything on my notes on my phones now. And there's great value to writing stuff down, having something in your hand that you could just use, you know, uh, unless it's a letter from the DMV. I told you about that. Oh, that's horrible. horrible. Well, there's a reason for that. Um, when the act of writing, when you were a kid, did your teacher make you write your spelling words 10 times each? Oh, at least. But at least. I'm always on, on the blackboard because I got in trouble. So it'd be at least 100 times. <laughs> well, that's why. <laughs> I will not you. was always the starting of something. Yes, I will not. Yes. Yeah. Or, or or I will be quiet. Mine was I will be quiet in class. <laughs> um, but, but what that does is it creates neural pathways in your brain. It's actually neuroscience. And they knew that back then, even though they didn't know what neuroscience was yet. Right. It's pretty yeah. cool, right? Yeah. yeah. Amazing stuff that we knew that we don't know that we know. That's right. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I got that. Thanks so much. Yeah, it was, that was fast. I need to have that on the replay. <laughs> Thanks so much for being with us today on Matt Chat Live. I'm really glad that you're here. I'm glad that you're doing what you do and serving your community and your people, your friends, uh, You know the, the teenagers you get to meet and, and work with as well. I love that you have a heart and passion for people that are everyday people, right? I think that's fantastic. I can't get that little song out of my mind. Yeah. Everyday people. Is that where that came from? Maybe. So uh, it's really pa powerful and passionate to be able to have something like that. But folks, there's there's all kinds of ways that Susan can serve you and help you with your life, your your business, or or even at home with your family. There's some great ways to apply the the quiet zone method. You just have to check it out. Only 50 pages long. Heck, I can do that. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Right. So, Susan, if there is something you could say, well, there is, if there's somebody out there that you could say something to that might be your your big thing for them to take on in 2021 and move forward in life and say, OK, we're done with 2020 time to get on. What would, what would some of that stuff be? Be grateful. Be grateful for what you already have. Be grateful for what's here, because just no matter how much drama and how much crap we've had to deal with, even in 2020, there were valuable lessons that we can take from that. Be grateful for that. Yeah, no doubt. That's yeah. a great, great, great couple of words, folks. Be grateful. Hashtag be grateful, right? Yeah. So thanks again, Susan. Appreciate you being here today on Matt Chat Live. Thank you. Thank you for having me.